What's up everyone? I'm Matt Wilde and I'm super excited to be here with you today to break down my latest single, Nostalgia. The track is a blend of piano, bass, drums and some synths and I had a lot of fun mixing it and producing it myself. I posted the demo on social media and it had quite a good response and I've had quite a few messages about the tune and when it will drop and I'm super excited to share that it's out now. All right, cool. So let's jump straight in and let me show you the chord progression. It's a four chord sequence and here are the chords. So what have we got here? We have an A flat seven, sus four, F sharp minor seven, E major seven, D major seven. And what's cool about this progression is that it descends in whole steps or whole tones. So we have A flat, F sharp, E, D. I won't go too much into that now, and if that's new to you, basically we skip a note, skip a note, skip a note, and play a note. They're called whole steps. So I'm playing them quite low down on the register of the piano, which I think has quite a warm, somewhat dark sound to it as well which maybe is counterintuitive, but that's how it feels to me. And that's basically the sequence. On the record, I arpeggiate the chords a bit and add some rhythm, something like this. And that's it really. So what I'm doing in my, between my hands is I'm playing the chord, and I'm rolling up the chord between my two hands, almost like a drummer or thinking about each of my fingers as individual drum elements. That's like the first chord, something like that anyway. And I don't always play the same thing. I kind of feel it, I guess, through practice, you can get to that as well. And it's really highlight in the 16th note. So gagadooka, dagadooka. I could do a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one E and a two E and a three. And obviously I'm not playing them all, da 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 da. But I might play ga go do ga do ga ga do ga do ga do da go ga ga do ga da ga do go do go da ga do go do ga ga do go do ga. That sounds really silly, but that's kind of a verbalized version of what's going on in my head. And another thing to note and uh, notice is that the chords are pushed. So I'm not playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's more like one E and a two E and a three E and a dakaduka. So I'm playing on the ands or I'm anticipating the chords. Dakaduka duka One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. And I think they're all pushed. So one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. This one's on the down. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. And that's the main theme. There is a B section, but it mostly is a more or less ambient um, interpretation or improvisation around those chords. But those four chords comprise the majority of the song and set the tone for the nostalgic feeling, I guess. Next, let's check out the project file on Ableton. So the first thing I notice is that this tune has four elements, but really of those four, drums, piano, and bass are the main themes and elements. Uh, synths, which are incredibly soft in the mix, just about audible to add and elevate the track at certain points to create a bit more energy. But let's first start with the drums. So I played these drums on Ableton Push. Basically the hi-hat is highlighting 16th notes. And I guess the kick and snare are quite simple in their nature, but all together they swing really nicely. The kick and snare are really punchy, so it just cuts through the mix nicely as well. And that's basically it. In the B section, where the piano is improvising and leaving quite a bit of space, I filter 
the, the top end of the drums so that the hi-hat is less audible, or rather the higher frequencies are less audible. Here's how that sounds. And B section. But here I add some percussion, which I recorded some time ago. Very quiet in the mix, you might not be able to hear it. An open hi-hat and a crash as well. And that's it. Let's just listen to that B section again. So this is with the piano as well. I really like rolling off the top end of the drums. It kind of creates a different dynamic so that when we go back into and open up that filter again, it just adds a bit more lift. So let's check out the piano, bass and drums from the beginning. <laughs> nice squeak of my piano stool there. I could have deleted that by kind of like keeping things like that in. So for the piano, I recorded my upright piano with a pair of microphones, which creates a nice stereo image. playing the bass and the kick drum together in places, which I think really adds to the forward motion of this track. Let's just listen to those two together. So, ba, tsh, ga, ga. Not always together, but at times deliberately played together, which I think sounds great. And then with the piano, you can hear that the piano's uh, syncopated around that. Yeah, and that's it, three elements really. I often uh, throw loads of ideas at, at Ableton and edit later, it's kind of part of my process. And when I came to editing all the layers, I thought that the bass, drums and piano just worked really nicely. And then in terms of the synths, all I kept were some really subtle things. Um, a very quiet pad rise that I recorded over on um, the Profit Rev 2. And that kind of goes off into the section and yeah, there's a really nice reverb tail that connects the next section. Some strings that I've recorded on the Mini V3 by Artoria, basically a Moog Model D, but I've, I like this plugin because the original you can uh, is a monophonic synth, which means you can play one note at a time, whereas here you have the option to for it to be polyphonic. So here's how they sound, the strings. Let me increase their volume a little bit. So with elements like this that are sustained, I really like to play them very quietly in the mix. And I'm playing one chord over the whole sequence. That's something I really enjoy doing. So over all of the chords that we talked about. F sharp is in all of these chords. Uh, what other notes have we got? The A flat is in all of them. Over the D that becomes the sharp 11, so D major 7 sharp 11, uh, for those who like to get into the theory of things. And this C sharp as well works really nicely too. Over the first chord, it's the sus4, or the fourth. Over F sharp, it's the fifth. Over E major seven, it's the sixth or thirteenth. And over D major seven, it's the major seven. So they're like common notes across the whole sequence. And I just play those in different inversions on the strings, sustained over the whole thing, which I think sounds really good. And then the final layer of synths, I'm outlining the harmony of the chords. And then together, uh, the synths sound like this. And you'll hear like a pumping effect. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but um, basically what's going on is I really like, with elements that are sustained and quiet in the mix, I really like to hit a side chain compression really hard against the kick 
And I think in this particular track, it works really well because the kick is so prominent. And so this is the element in question. And it's basically ducking, you'll see at the bottom here, by about minus 20 dB. So with the drums, every time the kick is played, the volume of the strings ducks out accordingly. I've set the attack to 3.8 milliseconds, which is quite uh, a slow attack, I would say, which is just something I'm really digging at the moment, but you can play it shorter as well. That's 0.01 milliseconds. So basically, the shorter the attack, the quicker the sidechain engages. I had it around 3.8, so a little slower, which I think sounds great. And I'm hitting that incredibly hard, at least to my ears. Um, again, just adds um, movement to the track, especially with this element that is a little quieter. Yeah, and that's it, basically. Let's check it out. Here's a piano solo. And then we exit that solo back into the B section because I was improvising over the A section chords. So just following the form basically, A, A, B, and then A. Although here I just finished the tune with these chords with some reverb at the end. So that's the breakdown of the project file. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown video. I just wanted to share this behind the scenes process and give you an insight into the project file and the chord progression as well. Let me know if you use it or make something similar with these chords. I would love to hear it. Your response to the tune so far has been really, really lovely to see. And if you haven't already, go and listen to Nostalgia. It's out now on all platforms. And if you like videos like this, please feel free to subscribe to stay updated. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers, so your support means the world. Until next time.